The video is about Chabanenko variation of the Slav defense. It is also known as Chameleon Slav, and it speaks about its flexibility. This variation can transpose into various pawn structures. Thus, it may be a great choice for players who enjoy positional and strategic maneuvering. Main line of the Slav defense appears on the board if the move d takes c4 is played here. Later on, white regains the pawn, keeping two in the center versus one. Chabanenko would never agree to play what is already well-known opening line. That guy has dedicated his whole life studying weird chess openings and variations. And thinking of the Slav, something completely counterintuitive came to his mind. The move a6. At first, seems like a waste of time, but it is initiating an intriguing strategy. Black is now ready to capture on c4, cause having an additional supporter in view of a6, this time our extra c4 pawn has much better survival chances. Therefore, the Chebanenko Slav is basically asking White the following question. What are you going to do about your c4 pawn? Another reason to play a6 is to prepare b5, asking the same question about the c4 pawn, but in the most direct manner, because this time it's hit by two pawns. That move as well wants to provoke white to either take on d5 or advance. Now, white's most popular continuation is an immediate c5. Not only that the c-pawn survives, but it is also pointing out to the weak square black just created. It may look like white can later bring a piece there and enjoy quite comfortable position. Along with that, there is a nice space advantage on the queen side and white should try to take advantage of it. Before we see how to reply to this variation as black, we're going to analyze its pawn structure. As already mentioned, understanding this entire opening highly depends on understanding its pawn structure. Obviously, black has less pace and their pieces are begging us to change the pawn structure so they can achieve greater mobility. Question is, what is the pawn break black should prepare in order to get more space without weakening on camp? We need to play e5. That's the main thing. Attacking the enemy center and space advantage. If they take, that's fine, as our pawn structure remains solid. If they don't take, we can take on d4 or even go for e4, gaining space to attack on the king's side at some point later. Overall, if e5 is possible, black is doing well. Another pawn break, although a bit more risky, is b6. The thing is to remove the c5 pawn, then advance our pawn to c5, exchange for the one on d4, and dominate the center with the two pawns versus one. However, if white is able to hold the pawn on c5 playing b4, with an idea to recapture on c5 with the b pawn, black's idea, this pawn break, is typically seen as unsuccessful. Also, black needs to be sure that in case of c takes b6, they are able to advance their backward c6 pawn and get rid of the weakness. Now, black's pieces should be developed in such a way to support our main plan, e7, e5. Thinking of the minor pieces, one of our knights should be placed on d7, another piece that can help us organize in the plan e5 is the dark square bishop standing on g7. We can also place our queen to c7 and a rook on e8 to support e5. When it comes to the other knight, well, it may help to eliminate white's forces controlling e5, and our light square bishop is potentially going to g4, hoping to eliminate white's f3 knight, another white defender of the critical square. Now let's see how it works in reality. First we play here knight bd7. The moves such as g6 or developing the light square bishop to f5 or g4 would probably work well too, but I think knight e7 is the simplest way to accomplish the plan. White, say, puts the bishop out on f4, controlling e5, and after our g6, we put our bishop on g7 and for white, in order to avoid the f4 bishop getting caught by our f6 knight, they need h3 here. We just castle and 
Say they go the way Halifman played against Bacro, queen c2. We had knight e8 and then simply e5. The point is, well, white cannot defend both of these pawns after queen e7 and the game is even. There is another game played by two strong GMs where bishop d3 has been played instead of queen c2. Just look how black maneuvered to install e5. First, rook e8, then knight f8, then knight 6 to d7, and finally, mission accomplished. Second most popular option for white is simply to defend the pawn with e3. The main drawback is that white is blocking their dark square bishop, but the idea is to force black into the semi-slav, in which inclusion of the a6 is not perfect when played too soon. So black is not going to play e6, but continuing Chebanenko style, playing b5, trying to provoke the pawn to advance, and then continue with the operation e75. Now I need to mention that the e75 plan does not work for black while white still has the c4 pawn there, because white gets a chance to trade all those pawns in the center and leave black with an IQP. So in order to provoke c5, we need b5. White can choose to trade on d5 or defend the c4 pawn with b3. If they take, they are transposing into the exchange slav, which is not difficult to deal with, but we are not going to discuss it here. On the other side, b3 is keeping the tension and we need a plan of how to develop and what is the overall plan for black. The most natural way to develop is by getting the light square bishop out, playing bishop g4, preparing to fight for the e5 square. White can choose a tricky h3, in which case black has an interesting gambit idea. Bishop takes f3, queen takes f3, and then Chebanenko's point e5. This is a very interesting pawn sacrifice, which overall works well for black. But we cannot look into it further in this video. We don't want to stretch the point of the opening too much. The other, more natural option for white is bishop e2. But black can pull out all the best moves without learning theory. Playing e6, bishop d6, and in case of h3 just bishop h5, then castle. Black wants knight bd7, of course, and white should not allow it by playing knight e5. Though a couple of moves later, knight bd7 is fine, because in case of knight takes e6, queen b6 is hitting two pieces of white and black easily equalizes after queen takes c6, followed by queen takes d6. In my opinion, the move a4 is probably the most annoying for black. It prevents b7, b5, which was our plan with or without capturing on c4. On the other side, it weakens the b4 square. Unfortunately, getting the light square bishop out to f5 does not work here because of typical queen b3 and then a5 and black's queen side is terrible. The move bishop g4 is even worse because white is gaining a tempo for knight e5. The move g6 transposing into the greenfield possible, but white won't regret having a4 included in that case. Instead, we will opt for the semi-slav pawn structure, playing e6. Now white is at the crossroads. One, they can imitate the Catalan opening with the move g3. This is normal Catalan and this is our Catalan with a4 and a6. Two, they can choose the Meran or Semislav defense, playing e3. So this is typical Semislav, and this is our Semislav with a4 and a6. And three, they can opt for the classical Queen's Gambit setup with the move Bishop g5. Now this is the classical Queen's Gambit, and this is our Queen's Gambit with a4 and a6 included. It means that we need to understand those mentioned openings in order to know in which of possible lines the inclusion of a6 and a4 is good for black. For example, if here white decides to take on d5, 
we suddenly have Carlsbad pawn structure on the board, including the weakness on b4, which is a significant thing, knowing how much white wants to go for the minority attack and push b4. In this case, black can prevent the entire plan of white by playing a5. Now, another example, if e3 is played, black can choose so-called Cambridge Springs variation of the Queen's Gambit. Since there is a hole on b4, white cannot easily deal with the black queen on a5, followed by the bishop on b4. Notice that we are talking about transposing into various openings, variations, pawn structures. And that's exactly why this opening is also known as chameleon slot. Finally, there is an option to trade on d5, but this is not as dangerous as other lines. Actually, it is known as a favorite line of those who are happy to get a draw. And in case one would think that after trading on d5, the move a6 is useless, it is completely wrong. It's basically keeping white's pieces away from b5, and is, in fact, anyway played by black in the exchange variation of the Slav. Concluding this video, I need to say that this opening is probably not suitable for beginner level players. Simply, it offers so many transpositions into other openings and various pawn structures that one needs to understand in order to play well. Now, benefits behind playing and learning Chibanenko Slav is in pushing you to expand your general understanding of chess, especially understanding of the pawn structure.